currently uh, Biden at the Yad Vashem Memorial. Let's uh, cross live to uh, correspondent uh, Iris Mockler. Uh, Iris, tell us where you are. As close as you can get to Yad Vashem without the Secret Service agents, you know, booting you out, you will hear the choppers overhead. They're US military choppers, probably Israeli military choppers too. Uh, security is tight for this visit, but it is very important to Joe Biden to come to Yad Vashem. This is his 10th visit to Israel, his first as president, his previous nine. He has a, you know, in various capacities throughout his political history. He has a very strong relationship with um, the Jewish people that was made clear at the airport and also with the story of the Holocaust. And I think that's why he, it, it was important to him to come. I know that when he has taken his children when he goes to Europe with them, he's taken them to the sites of the concentration camps. And here he revealed for the first time something I hadn't heard. He said that at, his, at the dinner table in his family, they used to discuss the Holocaust. His father saying, why didn't they bomb the railway tracks? That would have saved some lives. So it's been part of his life for all his life, all his long life. Uh, and that's why it's very important to him to come here, to pay his respects and to meet some Holocaust survivors. As well as Israeli as we leaders. The light, yeah, and we, we heard Joe Biden earlier when he touched down uh, uh, expressing uh, that kinship and, as you said, Iris, reminding uh, his hosts that it was his 10th visit to Israel. The connection between the Israeli people and the American people is bone deep. It's bone deep. Generation after generation, that connection grows. We invest in each other. We dream together. We're part of what has always been the objective we both had. So Joe Biden feeling that deep connection with Israel. Iris Mockler, does Israel feel a deep connection with Joe Biden? If you listen to the visiting to the leaders who greeted the visiting president, yes, they do. They're aware of his long history. They're aware of his feelings. They're aware, actually, that he might be the last of the Demo the truly pro-Israel, the truly Zionist Democrat leaders. I don't know if people who are younger than him in his party would express themselves the way he does. And I think Israelis are aware of that. I've seen some polls that suggest that some Israelis feel that Donald Trump was more supportive of Israel. But I'm not sure um, if you look over his long history, that if, if Israelis were aware of that long history, they would say that. Iris, you can't help putting this into the context of a, a Middle East tour where uh, the U.S. is testing how much clout it's got. And when you've got Joe Biden landing at the moment, if we get those uh, inflation figures back in the U.S., 9.1 percent. What's the perception of him? I think the perception is that he wants a, a lift, a foreign policy lift, as the Israeli leaders do. Israel is, is about to head into the fifth election in just over three years. This particular prime minister who greeted him has only had two weeks in the job. So I think everybody, all hands are washing each other. Everybody's helping each other with a little bit of foreign policy razzle-dazzle. But I, I do think that there is a perception that he is a weaker leader than, than Donald Trump was. I don't know if that's fair, actually. I've been looking back over the percentage points for American leaders at this point, just before the midterms, and not many of them have been high. But I think the, percent the perception is that he is a weaker leader. Iris Mockler reporting live. Many thanks uh, for that update. Um...